Um, so I work with uh, an NGO called Electronic Information for Libraries. We work with libraries and library consortia in developing and transition countries, more than 45 countries in Africa, Asia and Europe. And I manage a program on copyright in libraries called Eiffel IP that advocates for fair and balanced access to, um, to, to information resources and fair and balanced copyright laws that promote the library perspective in providing access to knowledge. And um, um, now, uh, uh, before we talk, you know, about your work here, the reason why you're here and the work in libraries, could you just t tell people and explain to something here about how these proceedings are taking place vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the access the public has to information that, uh, about the negotiations. Mm -hmm. Well, I've just arrived um, over from Dublin this morning, but I have actually been able to follow the proceedings since the meeting started last week because WIPO has started this great new service um, to have a live webcast of, of the committee meetings and a live transcript transcription service. So you can follow the proceedings in real time. It's like as if you're sitting here in the meeting and in fact you have even a kind of a better view because you, you can see the faces of the delegates as they're speaking and all the people all around them. So although, although I've only arrived this morning, I feel like I've been here all week. I feel like I've been kind of taking part in, in the negotiations. And uh, with my other library colleagues, we have a Skype chat going on. So it's really, you know, really a great new service. And I think it really promotes transparency. Um, it promotes the work of the committee. And, and I've been able to, you know, as a result, my colleagues, my library colleagues in libraries all around the world, from Armenia to Zimbabwe, have been tuning in and following the broadcast. So I think it's really a, a, a way that people can get a flavour of what their delegations are saying, um, what the different positions of the different countries and regions are, and how this whole kind of international copyright system works. And could you compare this to, say, to the act in negotiations? Well, um, I think there is no comparison. Um, I mean, the act in negotiations were done in almost total secrecy. Um, there was, there was, uh, you know, uh, certain NGOs were given certain access to certain documents at certain times, and, and you know, there is just no comparison. So I think it's a really, really um, great new service that they're offering here at WIPO, and I think it would be a, a, an example for other organisations and other institutions for how um, uh, results can be achieved, but in an open and a transparent way. Well, thank you, uh, 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 Teresa, and. Um, uh, I, I shall disclose as the interviewer that I'm also a, a member of your, I think I'm, I'm still a member of your advisory you board. Are a very valued member, thank you. <laughs> so, just to get that out on the table, can you tell us why you're, uh, why you're in Geneva today and, and uh, what you're looking to accomplish mm -hmm. here? Well, we're um, attending uh, this meeting of the SCCR, which we, we've been following the SCCR um, uh, committees for more than eight years now, um, in particular following the agenda item on exceptions and limitations. And as you know, there's a work program um, on three different areas, so blind and visually impaired people, libraries and archives, and education and research institutions. And so um, this series of meetings um, where there was a specific focus on a particular subject has been like an important um, part of the, the, the work program for us. So. Uh, I, 18 months ago there was a special focus on blind and visually impaired. At the last meeting there was a special focus on libraries and archives and this meeting has a special focus on education. But in particular what we want to achieve at this meeting is we want to um, have an agreement on a text for a treaty for blind and visually impaired people because we think that that's very important that goes forward. Uh, libraries and archives are, are you know, very supportive. We, we appreciate the, the issues and we um, Libraries are one of the key main distributors for distributing accessible material to blind and visually impaired people. So we're completely that, that's really one of our one of our goals here that we can get some results after all these years of negotiation. And then the second uh, issue will be to progress the uh, discussions that have taken place already on libraries and archives and the 11 issues that were agreed at the last meeting by member states, and then to start working on the education issues. Um, and then in terms of uh, the kind of for the committee going forward, so we, 2012, it's the end of, uh, there was a two year work program from 2010 to 2012. So at this meeting, there will be an agreement um, on the work program for the next two years. So that would be another important um, aspect that we get an agreement and a clear work plan on how we progress the work over the next couple of years. And they'll, they'll take up the uh, work program, you think, on, uh Wednesday, right? Probably. Probably. 
and uh, <laughs> probably go pretty late, do you think? <laughs> uh, they often do. They often do. Yeah. So, so, um, I, but I, I think, I mean, there's, there's, there's we're, we're in informal sessions right now on, I think it's broadcasting, um, and then there's evening informals on blind and visually impaired um, treaty, and um, and then the next issue will be the conclusions. Yeah. Have uh, do you know what the position is of the uh, our government of Ireland on the? nature of the instrument for people with disabilities? Um, well, Ireland is a member of the EU and as I understand it, um, Ireland is following the position of the EU. Um, but they've... I, I, I've not seen or heard any leadership on this issue from the Irish delegation. But Ireland will be, um, will be taking over the presidency of the EU in January 2013 from Cyprus. So um, I would expect them to be taking a more proactive role over the next six months. Thank you, Teresa. Is there anything you want to add before we conclude the interview? No, I think that's... Uh, I think I've said...